Tip eight, have a game plan for how to deal with gatekeepers. If you're doing a lot of phone prospecting, you work in, in inside sales, you know you're dealing with gatekeepers a lot. Uh, you can spend up to half your time talking to gatekeepers. But if you want to make small changes that have big impacts, simply stop and think about how you deal with the gatekeepers. You know, the question I would have for you is, do you feel like you are good at maintaining and improving gatekeeper relations? You know, I mean, you typically have opposing, conflicting objectives and interests with a gatekeeper. You have the goal of getting in, and in more cases than not, they have the goal and objective of keeping you out. So when you reach your goal, they're typically not re achieving their goal. So, you know, there's this conflict there. How good are you at dealing with that? You know, not just how good are you at achieving your goal, but how good are you at managing those relationships? If you watch the news, there's a lot of politics and in, in the news. How good of a diplomat are you in that situation? So what I would say is to stop and improve that area will Im have a big impact on your results because of the proportion of time that you find yourself in that situation. And you may think, well, I mean, I try to be myself and I try to be nice. What more can I do? Well, the reality is, is that there are small things you can do. And so we outlined those in a, in a full module on how to consistently get around gatekeepers. But let me give you an example of what small change you could, you could make. Th this one tip right here could help you if you are on the phone every day and you do interact with gatekeepers because a gatekeeper's favorite objection to screen salespeople out is they ask what is this in regards to and the reason why they ask this is because they don't necessarily need to understand who you are and everything that's going on with you they just need to know are you a salesperson trying to sell something okay and as soon as they determine that they know that it's okay to get rid of you. And to be honest with you, they don't want to block people out that sh they should be letting in. So this is a really effective question at triggering, uh, identifying salespeople trying to sell something. So they'll say, what is this in regards to? And if you answer it with anything that's honest or you know, direct, uh, a direct answer, you might say something like, well, I'm calling to introduce our company. I'm calling to um, schedule an appointment. I'm calling to... Uh, learn more about what you guys are doing in this particular area. I'm calling to see if you guys need such and such. Anytime you answer with anything like that, they go, oh, okay, well, we don't need anything. We're not interested. Uh, I, we don't take sales calls. Let me dump you into one of our supplier voicemail boxes. Um, so they shut you down. So here's something that's very small and very easy. I already talked to you about de developing your elevator pitch, which is a one sentence, could be your value statement. That's a great response to this objection. So they say, what's this in regards to? Well, you know, the reason why I'm reaching out to you is we actually work with, uh, we work with sales managers and we help them to shorten the amount of time it takes for them to train new salespeople. That's one of my, val one of my elevator pitches. And so I'm going to say that and I'm just going to stop and I'm going to sit there. And I'm going to let the next person that speaks is going to be the gatekeeper. Now, what I want to point out is that <clears throat> that answer that I gave them, him or her, uh, is not going to make them go, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about, and we actually need that. And let me put you through to so-and-so. It's not going to do that, and I'm not going to make any promises that it does. What it does not do is that it does not give the gatekeeper the key thing that they're looking for, which is the flag to go up that says, I'm a salesperson. It just doesn't give them that. It all, it's like a curveball. It'll leave them kind of confused. And so what they either might do uh, is they may either ask you another question or they might sometimes just put you through. Uh, that and other gatekeeper objections are explained in that training module. So I'd encourage you to watch that. Tip nine is to use some sort of call cadence. So cadence is another word for rhythm. And call cadence is what is the rhythm that we're using in terms of how frequently are we going to call someone? How, uh, what is the mix of email and calls? Uh, when do we email? When do we call? How long do we wait? 